forward to news. I was assistant news editor for quite some time. I worked at the journal for quite a long time. So I was really ha I'm really happy to be here. Uh, my, my middle daughter actually started here as a, um, she went to KCC for a few classes and she's now a full rights scholar overseas. So that slogan that KCC had, you can start here, finish anywhere or something. Is that how it is? It's really true. So I'm happy to be here. Thank you all very much for coming out to hear this. This is a new audience. Um, first of all, I'd like to start in the name of God, the most magnificent, the most merciful, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about myself, what brought me here. Now I'm going to move very quickly because I have some things to talk about. I, I do have a couple of responses to uh, the Deputy Consul General. I don't want to spend all my time uh, addressing all of his errors and fallacies in his presentation because it would take me away from the, the facts that I think you don't normally get in, in the newspaper. But anyway, um, back in the year 2000, I was Catholic and I was working at what is now the South Town Star. And the, the Arab community in the Chicago Southwest suburbs became one of my needs. And uh, that community is primarily uh, Palestinian. And as I was covering them, I started hearing the same thing over and over and over again. And uh, as um, the Deputy Council General said, yes, I am going to talk about the occupation. And I heard this word over and over and over again, the occupation, occupation, occupation. And what does that mean? Um, and I didn't really know what to make of it. Um, I was raised in a middle class Republican household. It pretty much supported Israel. I was afraid um, when in 1993, when the Oslo Peace Accords were signed, it was a big deal. Palestine was supposed to get their own state. Everybody was rejoicing on that same exact day. Israel talked about um, a new settlement construction. And I remember thinking, wait, they just signed a peace deal, but yet, they just announced they're going to build new settlements, which is part of the peace deal. They're not supposed to do that anymore. But I was afraid to voice that opinion because I thought that I would be called anti-Semitic. And that's a huge fear that a lot of people have. And I can tell you that anti-Semitism is discrimination against Jews based on their religion and their ethnicity. Talking about Israeli policy and how it contravenes international law and abuses human rights is not anti-Semitic. I mean, how many of us in this room have criticized Obama here? or any of the other things Obama has done in his administration. Does that make us anti-American? It doesn't. So anyway, um, very briefly before, oh, so I'm covering the community. I started realizing that the Palestinians, they kept saying the same thing. I couldn't find much about it in the American media, so I started reading the overseas media. I read the Israeli media, European media, and I started finding out that what they were telling me was true. And then I started finding out that my tax dollars to the tune of now we're, we're giving Israel $3 billion a year in unconditional military aid, plus billions more, and low guarantees and other aid and grants, clean reduced cost of weaponry. Um, it amounts to about $8 million a day. And when I found out that my money was going to support a regime and a system that oppressed an entire nation of people, I felt it was a moral obligation to start speaking about the issue. So I started writing columns, I started talking about it. Fast forward all these years later, three years ago Israel launched an assault on the Palestinians on the Gaza Strip. Three weeks in the, uh, December and January of 2008 and 2009, they killed more than 1,400 Palestinians, including 355 children. Um, shortly after that, the, the pro-Palestinian human rights activists started growing. Um, my organization that I work for now called American Muslims in Palestine opened its national office. And after some deliberation, I never thought I'd leave newspapers. I left my job at the Daily Journal to work for EMP. And I do their media work for them. I, I write advocacy journalism. So I write journalism from a point of view and other things. So I started out, um, and it, oh, by the way, my job 10 years ago is what led to Islam, but that's a whole other story, and I'd be happy to come back and talk about that too. Um, but that's where I am. AMP is an American organization focused strictly in the United States. Um, our job is to educate the American public about issues related to Palestine and its rich cultural and historical heritage. Um, so I'm going to disappoint uh, my co-speaker here. I'm not going to address certain issues overseas, such as what's the solution to state one state. AMP doesn't do that. We support the Palestinians' right to choose for themselves. We feel that we have enough of a job here in this country to just bring the facts to the American people. Because once people understand what's really happening and what our money is paying for, we really firmly believe they won't stand for it and they will start pressuring Congress to craft a more equitable foreign policy in the Middle East that's just to everybody who lives here. Okay, two quick
quickly, I just want to talk about the um, the last video that was shown, the 9-11 Palestinian cheering. Did you guys notice what outlet that was played on? It was Fox News. Um, that video actually has been thoroughly discredited many, many times over. It was old footage from years before. Um, I saw video footage of the Palestinians actually holding candlelight vigils on 9-11. And the Palestinians really hate Americans that much. I'm surprised I'm still alive after my couple of trips there. I'm telling you. So I'm like, um, I have to tell you that's one thing. The second thing I want to talk about specifically was the Mufti and that clip where he quoted the Hadith. First of all, that is not from the Quran. That is not in the Quran. It's a prophetic Hadith. It's a saying of our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It has to do with end times. It's an end times prophecy, much like Christians have in the book of Revelations, it's, it's about Armageddon. It was taken out of context and also, again, that outlet that it was played on, I think it was called Tell Watch or something. That is a um, Israeli-funded media group that monitors the media, but obviously with a bias. So, I didn't actually see that myself, but I just want to tell you that definitely it's not in the Quran, and I don't know the situation that that occurred in. So, um, without further ado, what I want to talk about, it does have to do with the occupation. It does have to do with settlements. It does have to do with human rights. I know someone who has a relative. This, I know someone who's an American citizen. He has a relative who lives in the West Bank. This man, the other day, became very ill. He turned yellow. He was jaundiced. He could barely walk, and he needed to get to Jerusalem for treatment. Did you know 90% of the Palestinians in the West Bank are not allowed into Jerusalem anymore? They took him. He could barely walk. He was 65 years old, and he was not given permission to go to Jerusalem. Why? Because he was a security risk, is what he was told. So he could not go there to seek treatment. Um, I know someone else, a journalist, actually, in Ramallah, who has come to the United States with the State Department. He's gone in at the invitation of NATO to visit NATO. He's now on a tour with journalists from the European Union. He also could not get 